All right, all right. Welcome to All I Maths TV. Here we learn mathematics all the time. Again, we have a challenge on the board. It's a set of um, simultaneous equation that carries radicals. So how do we solve this kind of simultaneous equation? Now, before we go into this challenge, this is All I Maths TV. And my name is Jix Anemo. Here we learn mathematics all the time. If you're new to this channel, kindly subscribe. And when you subscribe, do well to turn on the bell notification button so that you get notified whenever we drop an amazing video like the one you're about to watch right now. Now, without much waste of time, let's go into today's business. The question reads, m plus n equal to 72. So we should take this as equation 1 and m to the power of 1 all over 3 plus n to the power of 1 all over 3 equal to 6. This is our equation 2. What will be the values of m and n? So how do we solve this kind of a simultaneous equation? All right, so let's take our solution. So here we have your solution. So we put down our question, which is your m plus n equal to 72 as our equation one. Then we have our m to the power of one all over three. Let me write this word plus our n to the power of 1 all over 3 equal to 6 is our equation 2. Good. Now, if we look at this, what we do here first is to bring in another alphabet to represent your m to the power of 1 all over 3 and also n to the power of 1 all over 3. So from here, let's say here, um, let's take a x. So say let your x be equal to your m to the power of 1 all over 3. Good. So if x is equal to m to the power of 1 all over 3, and here we have m. So what do we do to get our m here? If we take the cube of both sides, then we can get our m. So from here, we now have this to be, therefore, our x to the power of 3 equal to our m. Clear? All right. Now, at the same time, we can bring in another alphabet again to represent n to the power of 1 all over 3. So, yeah, let's use our y. So, we take here y, let y be equal to n to the power of 1 all over 3. Again, if we are to make n the subject of the formula here, then this will now give us here y to the power of 3 equal to n. Now that we've established this fact, what we do? So from here, we're now putting your x and y into our initial equation. So from here, substituting into this equation, we're going to have our equation will now becomes, uh, this implies that m will have x to the power of 3 there, plus your plus here, what is our n? n is y to the power of 3 equal to 72. Let's give this equation um, 3. Okay, yeah, let's give this equation 3. Then, again, we look at the second expression. What is our m to the power of 1 all over 3? Let's look at it here. We said it's x. So, here we now have here to be x plus our y equal to uh, 6. This is equation 4. Ah, any confusion? No. So, now let's look at it carefully. We now have equation 3 and equation 4 can be solved easily now, okay? So we've handled the radicals here now. So now that we've handled the radicals, what we do? We make x or y the subject of the formula from equation four. So can I say from equation four, from equation four, we now make x the subject of the formula. So let's continue on this other side. All right, so, if we make x the subject of the formula, this will now give us our x is equal to um, 6 minus y. So we have 6 minus y. Now let's give this equation 5. Okay? Because we'll make use of this again. So let's give this equation 5. We cannot put equation 5 into equation 3. So we say here, put, put equation 5 into equation 3. So here we have 
x. So automatically, this will now give us 6 minus y r to the power of 3. Okay, then plus our y to the power of 3 equal to 72. Easy. What do we do? We open up this guy here using your binomial expansion. Okay, so if we use binomial expansion, let's get the coefficient first. So the coefficient we give us here, 1, uh, 1, then 1, 2, 1, and 1, 3, 3, 1. So these are the coefficients from our binomial expansion. So let's use that to expand this now. Then we're going to have this to be uh, 6 to the power of 3. Okay, then plus, yeah, we're going to have this to be the coefficient 3 dot, or uh, let me use uh, multiplication times 6 to the power of 2. Okay, then into minus y close bracket then we have here plus again then we have here 3 times your c's into um your minus y r squared there plus minus y r to the power of 3 again we have our plus y plus y to the power of 3 then everything equal to 72. All right, so if we simplify this, this will give us um, 2, 1, 6. Because 6 to the power of 3 means 6 times 6 times 6. Okay, then 3 times 36 will give us um, 108. Then times minus uh, y, this will give us minus 108y. Then here we have, this will give us positive so we have plus 18y, then here we give us negative minus y to the power of 3, and here plus y to the power of 3 equals to 72. Good. Again, here we, here we have minus um, y to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 3. So this, this will leave. So here we have our square, please. Okay. So from here, if we rearrange our equation, we're going to have this to be 18y squared okay minus your uh, 108y all right then here we have the plus 216 bring this to this side minus 72 is equal to zero okay so if we subtract this here we're going to have um 144 so we have 18y to the power of 2 minus uh, 108y then a plus one four four equal to zero. Eighteen can go into everything here. So if we divide through by eighteen, then we have here by eighteen, this by eighteen, and this by eighteen, and also this by eighteen. So if we divide through, here we're going to have one. So we have y to the power of two minus here we're going to have uh, six six y and here plus eight is equal to zero. Okay, so from here you can see that this is a quadratic equation and we can use factorization method. We think of two numbers that we will multiply together from the factors of it to give us plus it and minus, we will add it together to give us minuses. What are the two numbers? This will give us um, 4 and uh, 2. So we have minus 4, minus 2. Okay, so this will now give us here your y into minus 4y, then minus 2y plus 8 equal to 0. So let's put this, this, this in bracket. So what is common here? We have here y into, um, is y squared please? So we have here y minus 4, close bracket, minus 2 is common here, 2 bracket, your y minus times plus will give us minus Four equal to zero. So what we have here and what we have here, they are same. So what we do, we take this and take these two that are outside. Let's continue on this other side of the bird. So from here we now have this to be your y of uh, minus four bracket 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 y minus two is equal to zero. We cannot succumb to the zero product law. So we now have this y minus four equal to 0, or we have our y minus 2 is equal to 
0. So the two of them will give us here, therefore, y is equals to 4 or 2. Okay, so now that we've succeeded in getting the value of y, we we'll now go and look for the value of what? x. So for us to get the value of x, we go to equation 5. Look at our equation 5 here. It says that x is equal to 6 minus y. So from here, if we substitute for the value of y, we're going to have here x1, we have here x1 is equal to your 6 minus y1. What is our y1? We're taking this, right? So we have here x1, therefore, is equal to 6 minus 4, which is equal to 2. Okay, then we'll now look for x2. S2 will now give us 6 minus our y2. Okay, what is y2? It's 2. So we have here x2 is equal to 6 minus 2. So therefore, our x2 is equal to what? 4. Now that we succeeded in getting our x1, x2, y1, y2, so what we do, we come to this point where we say let x be equal to m to the power of 1 all over 3. Okay, so let's erase this and solve for the actual value of our m and n from here. Okay, so let's take our x1. So we we'll solve our x1 to be 2. So we bring our relationship here where we said your x to the power of 3 is equal to m. So we have here x1 to the power of 3 is equal to m1. Okay, so our m1, m1 is equal to um, your s, which is 2 to the power of 3, which is equal to 8. We've got on this. Again, we now look for your x to the power of 3, uh, 2, which is equal to our m2. Okay, so therefore we have our m2 is equal to, what is the value of x2? S2 is 4. So we have here 4 to the power of um, 3. Okay, and 4 to the power of 3, this will give us 64. All right. So we've gotten the value of m1, value of m2. We take that for that of um, uh, y. So let's look for our y here. Yeah. yeah, the relationship is y to the power of 3 is equal to n. So again, this now implies m1 is equal to your y1 to the power of 3, which is equal to, first y we got here is what? 4. So we have here 4 to the power of 3. And 4 to the power of 3, again, is 64. Then we have your n2, which is equal to y to the power of 3. This 2 is equal to, yeah, we have 2. So we have 2 to the power of 3. And 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. So we we'll succeed in solving for our m1, m2. So when, therefore, this now implies that when m1 is equal to m1 is equal to um, 8 then we have m2 is equal to 64 then n1 is equal to 64 then we have n2 okay n2 is equal to 8 so these are the solution to our set of equation where we have the variable to be m and n all right all right so this marked the end of this video tutorial okay the end of this um rhetorical simultaneous equation having radicals all right so if you learn something if you get something from this video tutorial I give the video a thumbs up and if you are not clear in the process of the explanation just leave a comment in the comment section okay we are good at replying to comments and if you have a better way of solving this challenge drop it in the comment section so that we can equally learn from you because here yeah, we are equally here to learn from you too remember this is online mass tv and my name remains jakes and emma no words i love you because you are always there and everyone of us at online mass tv loves you so much bye for now